Where have you seen money make its way into politics? Where have I not seen money make its way into politics? is the, probably the better question. Abigail Disney's grandfather, Roy, co-founded the Disney company with his brother, Walt. She grew up surrounded by the ultra-rich and is now a filmmaker and professional critic of the billionaire class. You have an ultra-wealthy class whose life and interests are entirely divorced from the reality of everyday Americans. The things that concern them are not a concern the everyday American just don't come up. Mm you know, if you're ultra-wealthy. Do you think the ultra-rich, if anything, are less qualified than yes. everyday people to just be empathetic, think about the problems of the world? There are studies that show that the wealthier you get, the less nice you become. In her upcoming documentary called The American Dream and Other Fairy Tales, Disney explores the collapse of the American dream through the lens of the happiest place on Earth. Her finger points directly at the top. A custodian would have to work for 2,000 years to make what Bob Iger makes in one. Do we live in an oligarchy, do you think, in, in America right now? Yes, I think we live in an oligarchy. Much of our oligarchy in this country is a result of the government privileging either an industry or a group of individuals within an industry or, or keeping classes of people away um, from the, the corridors of power. And the data is clear. That privileged class of people is injecting huge amounts of money into politics on both sides of the aisle. An NBC News analysis shows that so far this year, 18 individuals have each donated over $10 million to this midterm race. That's a total of $504 million, over half a billion dollars in political contributions. In 2014, only three people contributed over $10 million each. Good evening. Among the most active political players is Peter Thiel. The Silicon Valley tech billionaire and PayPal founder has thrown tens of millions of dollars behind just two Senate candidates. In Ohio, he's backing fellow venture capitalist and political outsider J.D. Vance. In Arizona, Thiel donated heavily to the campaign of Blake Masters. Each clinched their respective GOP nominations. And while Masters is happy to espouse his far-right political positions... In Arizona, there's an invasion at our southern border. He's much less forthcoming with details about the financial relationship with Teal, who's estimated to be worth $3.8 billion. We're just trying to talk about campaign finance. Producer Ezra Kaplan tried to press the issue with Masters outside an event closed to the press in Scottsdale last month. Peter gave what he gave, and I'm, I'm grateful that he supported that outside group. And I'm working hard every day to raise the money internal to the campaign that we need to go out and spread the message. Will you Thank be able you. to stay independent with the money? Masters is now set to face incumbent Mark Kelly in November. Kelly enjoys a much larger war chest from mostly small donors plus several super PACs. Masters, however, has received most of his support from a single super PAC funded by Thiel. And since the primary, that funding seems to have dried up. Peter Thiel declined our interview request, as did several other billionaires we approached. His biographer, however, says this is of a piece with who Thiel is. What he wants is... Uh, to pay as little as possible in taxes, to live with as much freedom to do what he wants, uh, whenever he wants, and to have lots of government contracts for his businesses. It's this idea that people like himself, people like Peter Thiel and, and Mark Zuckerberg and the other CEOs of these very successful tech companies are these genius capital allocators and genius administrators. And wouldn't it be better if they kind of ran the world. This is an extremely politically active group. Matt Lacombe is a professor of political science at Case Western Reserve University and has been studying the political behavior of this elusive group for more than 10 years. Over 90% of the, the billionaires we studied had made political contributions that we oh. could track down. That's a much, much higher proportion uh, than average Americans or even well-off Americans um, who we might think of as being generally politically active. What Lacombe and his co-authors have found is that while these billionaires have enormous influence, they stay out of sight, something he calls stealth politics. An overwhelming majority of them stay totally silent or are completely vague mm -hmm. about what their political preferences uh, uh, and policy wishes are. Uh, uh, and moreover, we find that many of them take political actions that would push economic policies uh, in conservative directions that clash with what uh, average Americans say that they want uh, through public opinion polls. And that secrecy has the support of the Supreme Court.
When Citizens United was decided in 2010, it helped create a new category of political organization, the Super PAC, and a new category of dark money nonprofits that allow political donations from billionaires and others to be effectively unlimited and to go unreported. We expect this court to fully utilize the First Amendment to protect the rights of people of average means. James Bopp was the architect of the landmark case and says his intention was to empower everyday people to pool political donations inside companies and labor unions, something he says the framers would have approved of. But Citizens United also wound up empowering the richest people in American history. Do you draw any connection between what you helped to create with Citizens United and the sort of some of the new tactics that academics are telling us are starting to emerge? Well, uh, you know, there's always been an advantage to have money. Mm-hmm. Surprise! Okay, mm-hmm. there's ab- ab- there's advantages to having money. Thank you very much for making. What's new is how and when that money is being deployed. So primary elections tend to involve less money, uh, and they tend to be less visible. Uh, all of that means that that the actions of powerful people uh, and the money they might have to spend can go farther. Let's think about this tactically for a second. If you're Peter Thiel and you've already put $10 million into the candidacy of J.D. Vance here in Ohio, maybe you don't have to worry about the general election. I mean, right, once he's won the primary, maybe the little R next to his name will carry him the rest of the way in today's hyper-partisan political climate. But it wasn't always like this. Once upon a time, it was culturally unpopular in the United States to be, well, rich. Today, we as a society tend to put the ultra-rich up on a pedestal. Now we're looking to people and admiring them for the quality of being able to become very, very wealthy. So there was a massive shift. Do you think that explains the political activism of billionaires, that they just feel, well, I'm qualified to make decisions for everybody because I've amassed this fortune through my pluck and my brains? That is exactly, I think, what's going on. Your activism, your filmmaking, your speaking out, even in front of Congress about this stuff, makes me wonder, do you think you would get involved in politics? Do you want to create a candidate? I think my unique position in this world is to use my position in the oligarchy to put the oligarchy out of business. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.